Howdy. What we got here is Windows 10 64-bit. Uh, it's actually the enterprise version. And I've been trying to lower my DPC latency for a while on this computer. Uh, I had the Intel Arc 770 graphics card and I was trying things to fix it and it's totally busted. But I stumbled across this thing, which is right here, if we look here, this is how to set up a device for real-time performance, according to Microsoft. And I kind of went down this little list here. I did these two things. Um, this says it disables uh, CP CPU idle states. And some of these things you can't actually accomplish without apparently, I think this is like, well, uh, I think it's the IoT Enterprise version of Windows, which I don't have. But a few of these did work. The power config stuff did work. I ran that. And then this other one right here worked, which is uh, this command right here in the command prompt window I've got. I ran that, rebooted, and immediately the entire system changed its uh, performance and totally changed the way Windows works. <clears throat> so right over here we have, this is what I'm booted up with. We have uh, the CPU, it's a you know, i7-3700K. Um, here is the processor usage in Task Manager. And so after you run that uh, registry entry, this one right up here, what you end up uh, finding is that your CPU is locked to 100%. Now, I don't think actually Task Manager is working in this sense. If we go over to like processes, then we can see that, you know, I'm recording an OBS, but uh, very high 98% CPU. It's nowhere near that, but that's what it shows in Task Manager. And then if you go to details, we can see that OBS is taking like 28, 40%. But again, under the performance tab, you see nothing. Like you just cannot tell what's going on. I have a hardware um, HW monitor or HW Info 64 here. And here's the cores. There's all my cores here. And an interesting thing is now, <clears throat> this is not idle right now. It would be idle if I wasn't actually real time encoding into AV1. Now, um, obviously, if I turn off OBS, I'm not going to get any uh, recording here. But if I do turn it off, these temperatures, which are now, they seem very high, but they only drop by maybe 10 degrees, maybe to like 60, I don't know, 8 to 70, just a little tiny bit. So this is not really showing load uh, in terms of the actual CPU temperatures. But again, if I'm not doing anything, it's between, say, 60 and 75 degrees Celsius, according to this. Now, I am real-time encoding an AV1 with the CPU, so that's a lot of well, it's using a lot of processors, so if I had done this without the uh, little tweak up here, the, uh, the registry edit uh, tweak, then this would show probably very similar um, load and heat uh, on the cores. However, uh, like, and again, I can't stop OBS, but this, it, it's, it only goes down by a tiny little bit of, uh, of uh, temperature. Um, what I do find, though, is that if I run latency monitor, which will show you the latency of your system. And again, I'm recording. I've got a bunch of stuff going on here, two screens. Uh, I definitely haven't closed like all of my processes and things, but there's my DPC latency uh, real time right here. And interestingly enough, there's no hard faults, which is like, what? If you run latency mon without this particular tweak up here, this, this changes entirely. and this is probably about the lowest latency I've got out of this system so far. As far as the BIOS goes, I just have um, the ASUS BIOS basically, uh, like its enhancement stuff turned on. I don't have XMP turned on because I can't because the stupid Corsair DDR5 isn't stable on this board for some reason, no matter what voltage I pump through that. So anyways, I just wanted to mention this. If you um, have an uh, inkling for the lowest possible latency on your system, doing, say, gaming or real-time audio-visual encoding, things like that. This thing, it works. This this uh, reg uh, command and this uh, little um, how to set up your Windows device for real-time. You can't do some of this stuff, but like, for instance, if I try and, say, stop the uh, Windows update mechanism in Windows uh, 10 Enterprise, it just says, nah, can't do that. I think you need the IoT version, but... Just thought I'd mention this. Uh, if you guys want to try this, it's a pretty interesting hack or tweak or something for Windows, which I've never, ever seen done before. 
By the way, there's all my cores, 5300 maxed, uh, just locked to that. Uh, P cores, 53 and 50, uh, or 4300 for the E cores. And they don't change, and that's the way I want it for low latency. So interesting stuff, folks. Um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty hard to get lower latency than that on a modern system, as far as I can tell. Right on. Bye.